central location in the management of soap so soap is a major source of disability including dysphagia that is the reason why they put on ng tube so the clinical manifestation of following difficulty may lead to malnutrition which has implications for health status and clinical outcomes including morbidity and mortality because the main uh, treatment for stroke patient is physiotherapy after the control of uh, initial uh, uh, damage in the central nervous system the process of recovery is mainly dependent on the good physiotherapy and uh, making the muscles stay in their normal way so that uh, there is no disuse atrophy and uh, inability to mobilize the nutrition support uh, products provide protein energy minerals and vitamin and enteral tube feeding during acute phase uh, may be required or it may be a long term requirement of enteral tube feeding also sometimes even up to 6 months and uh, validated screening of people at risk of malnutrition involves the use of what is called malnutrition universal screening tool which identifies the risk of malnutrition as the low risk medium risk and high risk so the main reason why we want to take care of the nutrition is to prevent the malnutrition and muscle wasting that can happen easily so the assessment of patients following is to include uh, the nutrition and hydration so the challenges are often encountered as patients may have difficulties in communicating speech may be affected or problems with mobility or standing making weight and height measurement difficult you said you have to measure the weight of the patient look for ideal weight and all that which is practically very difficult to find out now does icu beds are there where you can uh, know the car weight or the bare weight of the cot and then put the patient on and then uh, they deflect uh, i have seen beds in usa where uh, the bed will reflect the weight of the patient on that easily so in that way they can measure the weight but here i don't think we have such facilities still and when patient has failed a swallow test and unable to safely tolerate oral or fluids or food he must go for ng tube insertion within 24 hours after stroke so that at the earliest we can start feeding so that malnutrition can be uh, avoided follow test failure is defined as the inability to drink the entire amount continuously or any cough up to 1 minute after the swallowing attempt or development of wet gurgly or hoarse vocal quality these are all the things to indicate that patient cannot swallow normally central nutrition and stroke patient is a multidisciplinary team comprising of nutrition specialist dietitian speech and language therapist which provides a useful platform for nutrition therapy and the whether to deliver it in the gastric or in the uh, jejunal or whether it is to be done with a ng tube or a for a long term use you have to go for percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy tube and whether to do early or late initiation what is the duration you want to do the feeding whether the feed should be provided during the day or over the night <coughs> all this has to be decided before commencing the nutritional support and the insertion of an ng tube in patients following a stroke may be sometimes more complex because of their communication difficulties or inability to swallow and possible confusion so therefore the use of different techniques to prevent dislodgement of the ng tube becomes very very important usually we use tapes and mittens or nasal bridle and hand mittens and nasal bridles uh, may be effective but uh, you should have informed consent for that to administer them i don't know how many of you have seen this uh, things they are mostly in the western countries they use all these things an important element of care during enteral tube feeding is provision of regular oral hygiene which is very very important and if necessary frequent replacement of the ng tube and enhanced input by the physiotherapist through mobilization of sedentary stroke patients 
and these actions decrease the risk of aspiration pneumonia and pressure injuries and uh, using tape to secure ng tube to face may not may not be as effective as the more widely accepted approach of uh, sticking the tape so this is the mittens which you put in the hand and uh, all prevent the patient from using his fingers to bring it out this is what is called the nasal burden something like a plastic thing which is holding the ng tube in position the, but the insertion of it is quite a difficult task this is the nasal tape which you use so the nasal tape how it has been stuck to the nasal uh, ng tube is shown here the, this is another type of nasal tube where it can be applied to the ng tube and uh, the single nasal tube l type and fixation guide gastric tube and how to fix it in children with a longer plaster so the mode of enteral tube feeding could be by means of bolus or continuous infusion earlier most of the hospitals earlier we used to have the nurses doing it regularly every 2 or 4 hours with a 20 ml or 50 ml syringe first they will aspirate the ng tube then uh, take the piston out of the barrel and then uh, fill it up and then hold it high up in the above the patient's head and it will automatically go and they will refill it that is the way it is for the bolus tube but if you connect it to a uh, infusion set and connect it to the ng tube that is called a continuous method so bolus feeding the third usually involves the use of syringe to deliver the feed to the patient at an agreed upon time while the continuous feeding method requires the use of pump and giving sets to control the rate of administration of the feed by changing the number of drips per minute and uh, patients in acute phase following stroke are not in a high hypermetabolic state unlike patients with other critical diseases so energy requirement at rest is found to be slightly increased in intracranial hemorrhage compared with ischemic stroke so if the stroke there are two varieties all of you know one is ischemic stroke other is a hemorrhagic stroke so if it is a hemorrhagic stroke the energy requirement is slightly higher for ischemic stroke it is little less so if blood glucose is not replaced in patients with stroke whose oral intake is reduced rapid muscle protein degradation starts in order to use the amino acids as an energy source and that is how the muscle wasting starts so this process accompanied by other hormonal defects like uh, hormonal defects inflammation and immobility rapidly leads to a clinical picture with a potential development for what is called sarcopenia or total muscle wasting so restriction of oral intake in the patient with stroke leads to rapid atrophy of the intestinal villi and drips and an increase in the intestinal wall permeability leading to what is called the translocation of pathogenic intestinal bacteria which of course venkat rao mentioned in the advantages of doing the enteral feeding uh, all those process of uh, culminate in the increased risk of sepsis malabsorption of enteral nutrition due to diarrhea may lead to severe hypoproteinemia and hypoalbuminemia so how are calories protein fluid requirements calculated and what is the dose of nutritional product so indirect calorimetry this is one of the common things or latest things which are being used nowadays to assess that all the old classification of uh, the total kilo calories and then dividing into the components that is all the job of the nutritionist but now we, this uh, I, i see or indirect calorimetry is the best way to calculate the daily calorie need of a stroke patient and it depends on the hypothesis that all oxygen taken into the body is used to oxidize energy sources in the body and all carbon dioxide produced during this time interval is released through expiration that is the concept behind this the energy content of an individual need rest is calculated using closed spirometry system which captures the oxygen used and carbon dioxide produced in a defined time interval so measured volumes are converted to the daily calorie requirement using what is called year formula 
the harris benedict equation which was uh, used in the earlier days is no more practice now and it is a non invasive and cheap method it calculates metabolic rate with an error rate of 1% the daily prote protein requirement is uh, uh, especially in patients calculated at 1 to 1.5 gram per kg per day protein is uh, used to require ic hospitalization may reach 2 grams per day also protein is an important macronutrient for wound healing supporting immune function and preservation of bmi so daily fluid requirement is calculated at 30 ml per kg to prevent dehydration calorie calculation considering ideal body weight is frequently used as a practical method so daily calorie requirements in stroke patients may be calculated at 20 to 30 kilocalories per kg so it is aimed to start nutrition at 20 ml per hour if it is a liquid preparation which you have to give in the in feeding and reach a target of a total target within 48 to 72 hours so this is the method of indirect calorimetry how you do that in intubated patients or in a so the, this is the picture which shows how it is uh, there is a ic machine which is available which will show all the calculation of oxygen consumption and co2 elimination uh, this is the value you will get and see how many kilo calories are required and uh, respiratory portion and the expenditure everything is shown in that so now <clears throat> i was told by one of the former pgs that uh, in the workshop going to teach how to use their calorimetry in this intensive uh, training so in icu in non intubated patient you can have a total food like this and the entire expired year will be collected and you can get a whole thing process and calculated so this i thought this may sometimes be asked as a short note question also in your theory paper so which central product to choose central nutrition products are divided into four groups polymeric oligomeric elemental and disease specific as modified products and standard polymeric products are preferred in all stroke patients Osmolalities vary between 265 to 320 milli osmoles. Energy content provided is 15 to 20 percent protein, 30 to 35 percent fat, and 49 to 55 percent carbohydrate. So all most of the central preparations will have a majority carbohydrates. And a standard 500 ml product contains 20 gram protein, 60 to 20 gram fat, and 60 to 70 gram carbohydrate. 1 ml of standard polymer product provides 1 kilo calorie of energy and its therapeutic value is 6.5 to 7 diabetic products may be administered if blood glucose are uncontrolled in stroke patients sometimes you know they may or the stress may produce a state of diabetic diabetic raise blood sugar level so fiber rich products can be given patients with diarrhea or constipation high calorie products can be administered in patients with fluid restriction whose energy requirement cannot be provided by the regular <coughs> uh, large volume products products high in protein can be given to patients with protein deficiency these products may cause asthmatic diarrhea due to high osmolality how to dental feeding be administered it can be by continuous infusion through special pumps or by intermittent bolus as i said earlier the advantage of continuous infusion is decreases the risk of aspiration pneumonia uh, diarrhea contamination risk of product prevent pending of unnecessary assistant healthcare professional that is you don't require a nurse to do that every 2 hours or 4 hours so less of uh, professional uh, paramedical workers are required intermittent dental feeding may be preferred in patients who are mobilized at the stage of discharge or in those who are planned to receive dental feeding at home in those patients you don't go for continuous feeding the head of the bed should always be kept raised to 35 to 40 degrees to the risk of as the decrease the risk of aspiration 
routine use of propionating agent is not recommended that is the current recommendation they are recommended or used only under conditions of gastric distension or if the patient has nausea vomiting regurgitation or constipation or sometimes it may be used when you want the tube to be passed from the gastric to the jejunal area post pyloric region Oral hygiene performed at least twice daily using oral antiseptic like chlorhexidine decreases the risk of pneumonia in stroke patients with enteral feeding requirement. There is no correlation between gastric residual volume and the incidence of pneumonia and aspiration. Nowadays we use ultrasound also if we have any doubt about the gastric volume assessment. What are the complications of enteral nutrition in stroke patients and how they are treated? This is the next question. Diarrhea is very common. Nausea, vomiting, constipation, free feeding syndrome. So this uh, <coughs> flow chart, nutritional support in stroke patients, nutrition screening assessment, bedside dysphagia screening. These are the two things first we have to do. Whether the patient has got any difficulty in the the swallowing, next thing, what should be the nutritional uh, requirement. So, first of all, see whether there is a chance of the patient becoming malnourished or he is not, not malnourished. If he is malnourished but not dysphagic, he can go for oral nutrient supplementation. He is malnourished but also dysphagic or if the oral nutrition supplement is not eating properly, refusing to eat due to mental state or some other reason. He is able to swallow, but he is not cooperative. Then it is called a failure. Then you go for enteral nutrition via NG tube. Or if the patient is not malnourished, but he is dysphagic, you try to change the food texture and try to feed. Don't give him too much of a solid food. Make it very, very uh, semi-solid and liquidish and try to feed. But if there is a failure, go for enteral nutrition. Patient is malnourished but not dysphagic. Go for nutritional follow up and uh, enteral nutrition one month. You have yes or no, percutaneous. If, more, if it is required for more than one month, then you have to go for percutaneous gastrostomy. If it is not required, cautious transition to oral root feeding. So these are all the guidelines or advices that are given. And this is the jugging jug following screen preliminary investigation, how to find out whether he requires an NG tube or not. You do the direct following test or preliminary investigation, vigilance, cough and throat clearing, saliva swallowing, all these things are given a mark. So GUSS, just the gene swallowing screen is used in these patients to decide, first of all, whether you have to put in an NG tube or not. Okay. So that's what I thought. Of course, uh, he has given an elaborate uh, details about the composition and nutritional part of it. So that also can be included if time permits in your answer and then it will make a whole command for it. Yes, sir. Questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions from students? No doubt, sir. Sir, uh, is there anything uh, nowadays related to local household feeding, sir, or the native feeding, alternate feeding from? Once the patient, uh, nowadays we, we still have the uh, concept of sending the patient with the NG tube, teaching some of the relatives or the attenders to how to feed the patient. Once you send the patient to home, continuous feeding is not possible. It, uh, it has to go to inter intermittent feeding only. So they can be taught how to do that at home uh, by the nurses or the paramedical people and uh, some intelligent attender can follow that at home. Yes, sir. So many of the patients in chronic illness, debilitating or palliative care, they will be taken care of by caregiver at home, sir. Most of them non-medicals yes. or family so members. The caregiver must be well trained how to do this. That uh, head up tilt is very important, 30 to 45 degree head up position. They should not just feed when the patient is fully recumbent. And then they must uh, be the, make sure that uh, there is no block in the tube. 
they don't force it uh, all that should be talk to the caregiver and then only decide okay sir thank you very much sir thank you sir uh, salary i think 730 yeah, is the it should be uh, fixed up the next time so that, that is another topic we have to discuss so